Mr. President, tomorrow, President Biden will do something he's done only once before in his term as President of the United States. He'll travel to the U.S.-Mexico border, to Brownsville, Texas, in an attempt to address his biggest political liability. Since the President took office three years ago, U.S. Customs and Border Protection has logged more than 7.2 million migrant encounters at the southern border. By that, we mean people who showed up at the border and, by and large, simply been released into the interior based on an initial claim of asylum, which is yet to be put in front of an immigration judge. And it may be as long as, in places like New York, 10 years in the future before they ever get in front of an immigration judge. Or, as we've seen tragically here most recently, these migrants will be paroled or simply released into the interior of the country, even without a claim of asylum, given a work permit, and stay here indefinitely. 7.2 million is higher than the total number of migrants who came across the southern border under President Obama, who served eight years, and President Trump, who served four years. So the Biden administration has done in three years what it took 12 years for the two previous administrations to accomplish. We've experienced more illegal immigration in the last three years than in the last 12. The American people have become increasingly concerned at the southern border because they see with their own eyes that this is a humanitarian crisis, and it's a public safety crisis. And they overwhelmingly and quite appropriately blame Biden administration policies and the president himself. They see that his policies and his rhetoric, rather than deter illegal immigration, have actually encouraged it. Let me say that again. They understand that the policies of this administration and the rhetoric that's been used are the driving force behind America's most serious border crisis in history. But as usual, the president refuses to accept any responsibility. He's tried to blame everybody but himself. He's blamed congressional dysfunction. He's blamed MAGA Republicans. He's blamed anybody and everybody that he can possibly think of rather than accept responsibility himself. Not only that, he has at different times claimed that he lacks the tools to fix this crisis. At different times, he's claimed that his hands are tied unless Congress passes new laws. The problem with that storyline, that narrative, is that the facts simply don't support it. For one, the suggestion that only Congress can fix the crisis implies that Congress created the crisis. I would point out the same laws that were in effect during President Trump's administration are still in effect during President Biden's administration with far different outcomes. As each of our colleagues knows, Congress has struggled to pass any, in any immigration laws in recent years, and certainly it has not passed any that would cause the dramatic surge in immigration that we began the day that President Biden took office. The President was dealt exactly the same hand as his recent predecessors. The only difference is he used these authorities entirely differently and sent an entirely different message. As I've spoken before on the floor, the Border Patrol, which are the experts on border security, tell me that there are two main drivers of illegal immigration. One is push factors, they call it. Poverty, violence, a desire for a better life. And we understand that. America is a nation of immigrants, of legal immigrants. 
But there's also the pull factors, like a magnet, encouraging people to make the dangerous journey to our border. Even in the form of unaccompanied children, designed to exploit gaps in Biden administration policies and permanently reside in the United States. Earlier this week, I was surprised by a New York Times article that acknowledged the fundamental hypocrisy behind President Biden's efforts to shift the blame once again. This is a quote from February the 26, 19, excuse me, 2024. The New York Times, David Leonhardt is the columnist. He said in part, he said, Biden is the president after all. And a president has significant authority to shape immigration policy, even without new legislation. Biden himself has been aggressive about using this authority, albeit to loosen immigration policy rather than tighten it. So the current phenomenon, this crisis, humanitarian and public safety crisis, is as a result of President Biden's own policies. It's not the laws that are broken or inadequate. It's his will to actually enforce the law and his active encouragement for people to come to the border because they know they will successfully be able to stay in the United States. I've mentioned before a trip that several of us went, uh, colleagues on a bipartisan basis went to Yuma, Arizona, a little sleepy agricultural community in southwest Arizona, right across the border from Mexico. The Border Patrol chief said, welcome to the Yuma sector. Last year we welcomed people from 140 plus countries, not Mexico, not Central America, but from 140 plus countries that speak more than 200 languages. Senator Kelly, the, our colleague from Arizona, pointed out that there was an airport in northern Mexico, in Mexicali, which is a fairly large city in northern Mexico. And apparently what happens is people fly into Mexicali and literally Uber over to the Border Patrol and declare amnesty. Well, declare asylum is the right word. Well, I know the president will have a hard time with this, his second drive-by of the American Mexico border during his term as presidency, but of course his goal is to try to shift the blame once again. As this journalist wrote, President Biden is the president. He wanted to be president. He got elected president. He ought to do the job that presidents do, which is to enforce the laws. That's what the executive branch of government does. Congress passes laws. The judicial branch decides disputes about those laws as applied to given facts. But it is the president and the executive branch, the Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security that are responsible under our constitutional order for actually enforcing the law. And what has President Biden done with that authority? He has loosened immigration policy rather than tighten it. This is what I've been saying for three years, and even now, I can't tell you how surprised and pleased I am to see this stated in the New York Times. But President Biden could listen to Mayor Adams, the mayor of New York City. He said, this has been a disaster for New York. You hear the similar complaints from people like the mayor of Washington, D.C., the mayor of Chicago, 
These are self-styled sanctuary cities that you think would welcome these migrants, but they've been overwhelmed. But what about 7.2 million that are showing up on our back doorstep in Texas? It's hard to have much sympathy for the mayors of New York and Chicago and Washington, D.C., when they've dealt with just a fraction of the numbers that we have had to deal with in Texas without any help from the federal government. And the federal government has been actively undermining efforts by the state of Texas to reduce illegal immigration. Well, during his first few days in office, President Biden signed a raft of executive orders related to immigration and border security. He halted construction of the border wall. He dismantled the agreement we had with Mexico that migrants could remain in Mexico while they waited for their asylum claim to be adjudicated. But he ripped that up too. He ended an asylum agreement with North Northern Triangle countries and even issued a 100-day pause on deportations. So, even if you were here illegally, you knew at least for 100 days and very likely for the rest of your life that you would not be deported because of President Biden's policies. These are just a few examples of the executive orders President Biden issued within days of taking office. In the three years since, he and other leaders in the administration have gone to great lengths to roll out the welcome mat. One of the most egregious examples is the administration's widespread use of parole. Parole, in this context, means that a grant that, a tempor that is a temporary entry for foreigners under rare and dire circumstances. It was never meant to be used categorically or in a blanket fashion as the Biden administration has done. It'd been, it's meant to be used on a case-by-case -case basis in extreme cases. Someone experiencing a medical emergency at a port of entry. Somebody's donating a, a kidney or serving as a witness in a trial. It was meant to be used on a case-by-case -case basis, which by nature gives the administration a good amount of discretion. But to provide some comparison, during the two previous administra administrations, an average of 5,600 migrants were paroled into the United States each year, 5,600. Once President Biden took office, that number skyrocketed. The Biden administration has used parole to facilitate catch and release at the border at an unprecedented pace. But its use of parole extends beyond illegal crossings at the southern border. The Biden administration announced a new program which allows individuals from four countries, Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, to enter and remain in the United States all under the guise of parole. You don't need to claim asylum. If you can make it to the border, if you pay the smugglers enough money to get you there, you know you're going to be able to stay here. This program that the Biden administration set up intentionally and with great deliberation provides two years of legal status and work authorization to 30,000 30, migrants from these four countries each month. That's 360,000 a year. <laughs> Biden administration, roll out the welcome mat. Give them a work permit. Say you can stay, knowing that they probably will be able to stay indefinitely. In total, the Biden administration has used this case-by-case -case parole authority to grant parole to 1.6 million migrants in less than two years. 1.6 million. As President Biden has shown repeatedly, if you give him an inch, he will take a mile. Another example of gratuitous discretion came from Secretary Mayorkas, who's been impeached by the House of Representatives. 
Secretary Mayorkas issued a final directive for immigration enforcement priorities in the fall of 2021. This is, really should be called, instead of immigration enforcement priorities, it should be immigration non-enforcement priorities. That would be a more accurate title. But under this guidance, one headline summed it up, summed up the contents rather succinctly. It said, U.S. will no longer deport illegal immigrants based on undocumented status alone. We're not going to deport people who are illegally entering the country? What kind of message does that send? But the memo went on to explicitly discourage ICE officers. ICE is Immigration and Customs Enforcement that once you get past the border, ICE is the ones responsible for repatriating or returning people who are here illegally. This memo explicitly discouraged ICE officers from arresting or removing illegal immigrants unless they'd been convicted of a serious crime. It defies all common sense to ask law enforcement officers who take an oath to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States it makes no sense to tell them at the same time to turn a blind eye when you encounter people who are here illegally just because the Biden administration doesn't want to enforce the law. Secretary Mayorkas went further. He laid out mitigating factors that should be considered before arresting or removing illegal immigrants, including their age, how long they've been in the United States, and the impact the removal would have on their family. Even in the case of an alien convicted of a very serious offense, like murder, like rape, receipt, and possession of child pornography, ICE would have to consider these mitigating factors before they could take action and remove that person. The reality of the situation, no matter how inconvenient it may be for our Democratic colleagues, is that by entering the United States illegally, these migrants are breaking the law. There's nothing wrong with prioritizing the removal of the most dangerous criminals. Previous administrations have prioritized certain categories of illegal immigrants, like those suspected of terrorism or those who could be a threat to national security or public safety. But there is a difference between prioritizing certain groups for removal and exempting entire categories from enforcement. Given everything we've witnessed over the last three years, President Biden has no right, no right to claim that his hands are tied when it comes to addressing the border crisis by executive action. From day one, President Biden made clear that he was willing to use executive action. As David Leonhardt notes here, But he's, he did it to loosen illegal immigration, make it easier, not harder. He's used executive action to remove border wall construction, the Remain in Mexico policy, halt deportations, excluding broad my, classes of migrants from removal, parole more than 1.6 million migrants in the United States, and so much more. So this is a crisis of President Biden's making. This is a man-made disaster. And that man is President of the, of the United States. If the President believed that he had this much latitude to loosen immigration policy, he shouldn't feel constrained by Congress when it comes to tightening immigration policy. It'd be good politics for him. I pointed out that this is a major political liability for the president going into an election. He could fix it, just like he broke it. Executive actions have been used in the past to address migration surges and with a great deal of success. 
Back in 2005, then DHS Secretary Michael Chertoff testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee that I serve on and spoke about the department's response to a surge of migrants from Brazil. All of a sudden, a bunch of migrants from Brazil showed up at the border. But what did they do? What did the Bush administration do? They used their existing authorities to expand the use of expedited removal, which allows agents to quickly remove migrants who have no legal basis to remain in the United States. And as Secretary Chertoff noted, word spread fast. After 30 days, the number of Brazilians dropped by more than 50%. After 60 days, it dropped more than 90%. President Biden could do precisely the same thing, but he won't do it. President Biden has the exact same authority to replicate that effort today. He could expand expedited removal, send a clear message that our southern border is no longer an open corridor. But as Mr. Leonhardt points out, all of the messages he's sending is, if you come, you can stay. What more powerful magnet, what more powerful pull factor for illegal immigration can you imagine? And as I pointed out time and time again, it's not just about illegal immigration, it's about the drugs. Because the cartels have figured out if you flood the border with people, you can overwhelm the border patrol. Many of them will have to leave the front lines, process paperwork, provide transportation, food, shelter, clothing to migrants in order to treat them humanely while they're here. But they're not on the border. And last year alone, 108,000 Americans died from drugs that come across that border. 71,000 of them from fentanyl. It's a synthetic opioid pressed into counterfeit looking pills that high school age children are taking across the country thinking that they're taking something relatively innocuous, but in fact it kills them. Fentanyl is a leading cause of death for young people between the age of 18 and 45. We know where it comes from. It comes across that border. It's manufactured in Mexico from precursors shipped in from China. But that is part of the disaster that the Biden administration open border policies have wrought. 108,000 dead Americans last year alone. Well, news reports are that President Biden could announce new executive actions on his trip to the border tomorrow. I'm eager to see whether he will reverse course and issue an executive order that will actually tighten the border will actually do his duty of securing the border or whether these are measures more designed to loosen immigration policy. Of course, I, I expect that the American people, being very smart, will understand why President Biden has chosen this time to, do, to take this trip. Second drive-by of the border since he's been president. It's all about the election in November. And he understands that this is a gaping political liability. And he's trying to plug that. And not only is he trying to plug that hole, he's also trying to blame others for his failures. And Mr. President, that will not work. The American people being very smart and perceptive, they can see through that smoke screen.